Hi, we want to welcome you again to our program. Today we're going to continue with another topic that is also very important. Yesterday we saw how to preserve our foods. Many people want to go to the country. One of the concerns that they have is how to preserve their foods. Well, uh, we learned a lot yesterday about this. So today we have a very important topic and uh, this is going to be on where to live. Which play to choose? Where we can establish ourselves in the country? What do we have to look for? Which place to look for? But before we continue, I would like to invite you to join us in a prayer. Dear precious and heavenly Father, we thank you because you have given us all these things. You have given us this knowledge and uh, you have taught us how to live in the country and today we're going to be learning more. We ask you for your presence and understanding. We also ask you to be with the person who's going to share uh, this uh, presentation with us. And we ask for blessings upon each and every one of us. Guide us and be with us and give us the strength and power to obey you. And lead us in the path of uh, righteousness so that we may do our duty and place ourselves where we need to be. Forgive our sins and be with us. We pray in the name and merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Before we proceed to our presentation for today, let us now uh, watch a special item. Now is the time for us to move on with our presentation for today. With us, Sister Kathy. All right, it's a privilege to be able to give this presentation. My husband and I have been living out in the country together for 45 years. And we have, before that, both been interested in gardening and uh, country living before we ever even heard of an Adventist. So we are very much interested in this subject. And I'd like to start out with looking at Genesis 2, verse 15. It says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And so this was God's plan from the very beginning that we would live in the country and especially to do the gardening, not just live in the country. But the gardening is a great part of this. His original plan is the more nearly we come in, 
into harmony with God's original plan, the more favorable will it be our the more favorable will be our position to secure health of body and mind and soul. So it not only for our children, but for us. So I want to share our experience with you because we learn. We learn from our mistakes and we've made good good decisions and we've made bad decisions and we've learned from them. And so we're available for any questions that you might have in the future. You can contact us and we'll give you our um, experience in it, which is not anything that that is great about us, but it's just the lessons of life that God has taught us. And so we want to give him the glory for all of the blessings and the lessons that he has given to us throughout the years. And so when we decided to locate in the country, it was a decision, a firm decision. And because of that, we didn't let anything interfere. And God blessed our efforts. And it says in 5T 182, paragraph three, it says, whoever will rely wholly upon divine grace may make his life a constant, I'm sorry, I've got to move this a little bit out of my way, seems to be in my way. Um, can't read the whole thing. Start that paragraph over. It says, whoever will be, whoever wholly rely upon divine grace may make his life a constant testimony for the truth. No one is so situated that he cannot be a true and faithful Christian. However great the obstacles, all who are determined to obey God will find the way opening as they go forward. And that's in 5T 182. And so we were also determined that we weren't going to be in debt and to stay within our budget. And there's several things you need to consider about being determined to stay out of debt. And one thing is you don't have to count your mortgage as a debt because if you're being wise, you can actually save money by buying a house versus renting. That was our experience. And then as you live in a place, because God has given you, he's given you a desire for order and cleanliness. You can so clean up a place and paint it and plant trees and do all these things that when you're done, if you need to move and go to another place, then you actually get more money when you sell it. So you're making money buying a house and doing these things to it because it's your house. So you you're more interested in making it nice. Whereas if you're renting, you don't, you know, it's, it's not yours. I mean, you're going to take care of it, of course, but you're not going to put that extra stone wall up or flower garden in, things like that. So another way we can economize, this is found in 1T 455. It says, those who believe the truth should practice economy live upon plain, wholesome food, always making it a rule to live within their means. Brethren should never engage in new enterprises without consulting those of experience who are good managers in temporal and spiritual manner, matters. By doing this, they will save themselves much perplexity. And so, like I said, we're here to answer any questions from our years of learning, I guess you can say it's a, the school of hard knocks. So here's uh, something to consider also in Adventist Home, page 139, paragraph says, the parent should get as suitable a place as their means will allow. Though the dwelling may be small, yet there should be land in connection with it that may be cultivated. So, so the land is more important than the house. You can live in a small dwelling. Our first house, because we were to in the center for learned so much there and we're blessed that it was time to move on. And we had a neighbor that lived uh, down the road and we noticed this old 
and it was old in our day, which was 19, somewhere around 1979, 1980. And it was old in our day. And so when we saw it, it just been sitting there and sitting there and we said, oh, you know what? We could live in that and park it someplace in the country and we could save up money to buy, have a down payment for a house. And so we went down the road and uh, we knew these people that they had lived next to us and we shared, uh, they came and got some hydrotherapy every once in a while and we would share our food. And so they were familiar with us being there. And so when we went there, we knocked on their door and we asked them, you know, we would, we would like to know if you would sell that uh, RV. We have a, a great need right now. And they looked at us and they talked about it together and they came back and uh, looked at us and they said, you know what? We are impressed to give it to you. And I was just in tears because, you know, when you're working voluntarily and you don't have any money and you've put your all in it, it was just a sigh of relief that we knew God was leading us. And so we took that and we uh, found a place in the country. Somebody needed one of their property. They wanted somebody on their property. They didn't have a home there. It was just in the country and there was already a well there. And um, we were about to, uh, we, we had two children at the time. And uh, so we put the bunk, some bunk beds in the back and we retiled the floor and made it look really nice, made it our home. And we were very happy to have that. And so we lived in that for a while. And, and uh, we ended up going back to the wellness center for a short time. And uh, uh, that didn't work out. So we left again with some friends and moved to California into a home that somebody wanted to have uh, taken care of. And so that was, that was a blessing also. That was within our means. But I just put this picture up here because I wanted you to compare. This is a modern day uh, home and it's popular because it's small, it's economic, and we were unusual doing it th that way back then. But now it seems like a lot of people are interested in living in these small homes. This was another, um, when we got out to California, we lived in that place and was doing some caretaking. Um, my husband decided that uh, he wanted to make a bus into an RV and we were gonna go someplace else and live for a while because there was a, a call to come work at this, um, it was a self-supporting institution where they were doing publications and we were interested in that and so we, thought, well, we could fix up this bus and, and live in it there. And my husband was also, he just heard about um, using diesel fumes. I think it was diesel, might've been gas fumes to run an engine. So you weren't just running it on gas, you were running it on the fumes. So it was so economic. And so he had a lot of fun turning the bus. It was very similar to this one into our home and we made it very cozy, put a little wood stove in there, just like this one has a little wood stove I see sticking out the top. And we lived in that for a few years. And then God had us work at another place. Somebody wanted a wellness center started down in Southern California. And so we sold that and moved down there. And this all happened very shortly. So I'm just telling you, if you, if you want to live in the country and you want to be out of debt, this is a route that many people are taking because it's affordable. Um, so we also lived in another trailer one more time. We decided we're not gonna try to do self-supporting work and work for other missionary institutions. We're, we need a home. We need, because our children were starting to grow up and we need to do homeschooling. And <clears throat> so, we got another travel trailer and we went to Florida because we decided we're going to both work and save up our money. My husband worked in the day shift. I worked in the evening at a Mennonite restaurant. And we had during that, it was like an hour during the day that we let a uh, Mennonite family watch our children, very nice family. And um, so we ended up saving $4,000 in six months doing this living in a travel trailer in a country setting 
it was a trailer park, but country setting. We felt like we were still in the country. And um, all these other places that we were at, we all, we had gardens and helped out with other people's gardens. Um, so we money going back to Arkansas it was cheap, taxes were cheap, restrictions were not there. So we, we went back to Arkansas, we found this wonderful little place and the Lord provided us with uh, our first home. And so what, what did we need to consider? What should we consider? We might not have considered all these things that I have up on the board here, but um, at that time, because we were young, but now that we've lived all this time, we've bought several places and sold them and made money off of selling some of the land and, and profited from this country living, not only profited physically, spiritually, mentally, but also financially. You can do that if you are looking for the right place. And so we, you want to have a good water source. And if you don't have a good water source, it's not that big of a deal because you can always drill a well, um, put in a, or put in a cistern. And a lot of people are doing this cisterns now, which are collecting rainwaters and putting in this big tank and then using that. And that's nice, especially for us in these last days when we think there might not be a time when we can buy and sell. We can also hook up a hand pump and just pump our water by hand right out of the cistern. If the well's not too awful deep, you can do that with the well also. Um, if you have a pond, you're still good. Even though you might be hooked up to county or city water, if you have a pond, you can use that. You can filter it to drink. You can use it for, for bathing, for, for cleaning. Um, if you boil it first for washing dishes and also a creek. We always tried to look for a piece of property that had a creek on it that was year round. So it may have a creek. A lot of places say, oh, it has a creek, but you wanna know that it's a live creek. If it says live creek, that means it's year round. It never goes dry. And you can also tell if you have a live creek or if you have some water right under the ground, if you have one of these on the property. And this, you can usually find this down in the valley of a piece of property <clears throat> near a creek. And if you see a sycamore tree, and you can find them pretty easy because the bark is white at the top, not necessarily all the way up, but the bark will be white at the top. And you'll usually see quite a few of them right along this uh, riverbed or this valley. And you know that if you dig down 10 or 20 feet, you're going to have water. So this is a nice thing to look for on a piece of property. So other things to consider is um, you don't wanna buy property with restrictions. That's usually a gated place because there's gonna be rules and laws and you have to have a certain type of roof and your house has to be a certain um, square footage. And um, you may have to be paying yearly fees for that gate um, upkeep and for the road upkeep and things like that. So you want to try to find something that doesn't have any restrictions. You want to consider the taxes. We made a big mistake when we built a house in Texas. We had a, a little house that was out of debt, but we always had this vision. We wanted to start another wellness center. One day we want to start another wellness center. And this was about 20 years ago. And we were living in Texas and was trying to start a work up there, a church. And um, we decided my husband wanted to build a house. He's always liked you know, the idea that he had built a house. And, but now it's, he's built several houses and several churches. So he got that. But the first house, we made the mistake. We bought the land. We wanted it to be closer to the city, um, which was to Dallas. Not close, but close enough that you could drive out and still feel comfortable um, from the city to go to church because we wanted to plant a church there. So we brought, I think it was 12 acres or something, maybe 15, and we started building a house. And we wanted the house big because we like to have people come and stay with us and help them with their health, help them change their lifestyle. 
And so when we got done with the house, we were, it was a beautiful house and it had cost a little bit more than what we had expected, but we figure I was working and um, making products that I could resell at wholesales. Um, it was a craft item and it was going very good. And so we thought we would be able to pay this off really soon. But what we didn't consider was the taxes. And when they came out and they estimated what our monthly taxes was going to be, it was more than we would ever want to even pay for rent, let alone pay a mortgage payment. It was $500 a month. I know that may not sound a lot to you, but we weren't making you know that much money. So we decided, and then I started getting sick, so I wasn't able to work. I started getting um, Lyme disease, and I got so sick. And during that time, we came, I came to near my deathbed, and what happened is I decided that I was going to commit my life again to the Lord, totally doing medical missionary work. And when I came out of that sickness, I was determined that I wanted to do some type of medical missionary work full time again. And so we just put our house on the market and we were going to go to Arkansas where things were less expensive, taxes were cheap, restrictions weren't there, and we were going to try to start up a work. So we put our house on the market and it wouldn't sell, and it wouldn't sell, and it wouldn't sell. My health was getting better and better. And then we were asked if we could come and start my Creek Wellness Center if we wanted to do that. So we made the decision to do that. And once we made that decision, our house sold immediately. So that was an answer to prayer. But anyway, with the taxes and everything, it was just um, not a good idea. You have to look at the taxes. And when you go to buy a piece of property, you can um, usually, if you look at all their information, they're going to have how much the taxes are per month. And if it doesn't have, don't buy it until you know for sure what you're paying for taxes. Um, you want to consider the climate. And not that it's the thing, the most important thing, but if you're really interested in um, uh, having peace about it, especially we, we had li we lived one time in Northern California and we were there, we got there in the fall and in six months, it didn't stop raining, but maybe a few days out of that six months. And by the end of the six months, I was ready to move someplace else. So you've got to consider that if you know the area, um, you know, if you don't know the area, ask questions, look it up. You can, we've got a wonderful source of searching out the climate of all areas nowadays. You wanna look at the area, if you're interested in having a nice garden and building a lot, um, putting in a lot of fruit trees, is the area cleared or is it wooded? Because if it's not cleared or wooded, you're going to have to do this. And that is expensive. Uh, you can't just cut the trees down and expect things to grow because you've gotta get those roots out of there because the roots are gonna zap the energy, um, the nutrients from the soil and so, and sometimes if the roots aren't up, the trees will just keep springing up, depending on what type of tree it is. And so the soil can make a difference. Uh, you can always put in uh, grow beds, boxes where you're buying soil and putting it in if it doesn't have good soil. But if it has good soil already, that's a plus. If it's cleared already, that's a plus. So you can take this into consideration when you're uh, looking at the price of the land. So you want to um, establish gardens and fruit trees. And 6T179, it says, working the soil is one of the best kinds of employment, calling the muscles into action and resting the mind. Study in agricultural lines should be the A, B, and C of education given in our schools. This is the very first work that should be entered upon. So country living is mostly about agriculture, not about just looking at the beautiful trees and shrubs. It's about getting those muscles worked. It's about learning um, common sense through, through uh, physical labor and experience. 
There's another quote in Adventist Home 146. It says, so long as God gives me power to speak to our people, I shall continue to call upon parents to leave the cities and get homes in the country where they can cultivate the soil and learn from the book of nature the lessons of purity and simplicity. So what this country life is, is a call to nature, to do gardening. And if you cannot get out right now, you can start a garden, even if it's a, a community garden. And of course, um, the benefits of that you reap in the fruit that you get and the blessings that you can be to humanity is tremendous. Another thing to consider is the septic system. And uh, usually a septic system costs about $5,000 to put in the tank and the leach lines that already has a, a septic system on the property. You can deduct the $5,000 from what you might of another piece of property. If you have to clear it and it's already cleared, you can deduct another 5,000. So it all adds up when you buy a piece of property, if these things are already done, if why they're so much more expensive, this is the reason. They have a septic system. They have clearing. They may have a well. They may have a, it may have a spring because a well will cost you anywhere from five, uh, five to $10,000 to put in. And um, of course, this septic system, I know you probably haven't seen one like this. This is what we had to have when we were in Texas because of the type of soil. It would not um, leach. It was so full of clay. Very hard to have a garden there also. So you had to spray it all around and to get rid of the water. And so you can do a composting toilet, toilet and of course some states they're illegal. You can have outhouses in some states still, but most states they're illegal. I know they're illegal here in Tennessee because we have the Amish living in our area and most of them have one of those um, portable outhouses that are um, that you can order for construction and things. Okay, another thing to consider is, can you do missionary work? Is it a dark county? And we're told that we should settle in dark counties to let the light shine. And if you're going to the country to work, do you have another family that's also interested that's going with you? This is important for your children, for the people that you're working with to see that you're not just a single, singular person, that you have other people that can fill in the gaps where you may lack. And so can you do missionary work? It says God, this is found in Adventist Home 489, it says God calls for Christian families to go into communities that are in darkness and error and work wisely and perseveringly for the master. To answer this call requires self-sacrifice. While many are waiting to have every obstacle removed, souls are dying without hope and without God in the world. Many, very many, for the sake of worldly advantage, for the sake of acquiring scientific knowledge, will venture into pestilential regions and endure hardship and privation. Where are those who are willing to do this for the sake of telling others of the Savior? Where are the men and women who will move into regions that are in need of the gospel, that they may point those in darkness to the Redeemer? In families, I'm sorry, if families would locate in the dark places of the earth, places, sorry, I have to move this little uh, thing again. Okay. Places where people are enshrouded in spiritual gloom and let the light of Christ's life shine out through them. A great work might be accomplished. Let them begin their work in a quiet, unobtrusive way, not drawing on the funds of the conference until the interest becomes so extensive that they cannot manage it without ministerial help. So the call to the country and to other locations is a time when God can intervene to set you in the place where he has you, has for you. In um, Ministry of Healing 193, it says Christian farmers can do real missionary work in the helping the poor to find homes in the, on the land and in teaching them how to till the soil and make it productive. Teach them how to use the implements of agriculture, how to cultivate various crops and how to plant and care for orchards. 
Okay, so also we need to consider, will we be able to resell, resell this place? Um, not that that has to be something, but if you are starting out and you have a mortgage, it is a good idea to buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, fix up, maybe sell land off the part that you bought until you have enough money to buy out of debt. This, is my, this has been our experience. Possibly you have the money to buy it, pay cash. That's great. Most people don't. So if you find a place that needs to be fixed up, you set yourself to work. God will bless because he will give you the ability, just like they were that built the temple. They were men that were filled with the spirit to do this embroidery work, to do this rock work. If you set out to do this for God, he will give you the talent. So you want to consider that you can resell it. If you're buying a place and it's in a area where there's a lot of homes that are trailers and rundown places and it's it may be a nice place, you would not be able to resell that and make a lot of money as if you bought something that was a a nice sturdy house in a nice area but if fixed it up you would be able to resell it and make some money that would be a good place to buy you want to consider um, that you can also find job sometimes you're so far out in the country that it costs you so much money to travel back and forth and then you lose an hour or two a day in your traveling um, you want it to be a safe place you want to consider your neighbors. You may have a chicken farm next door that is putting off so much stench that you won't be able to resell it. And a good thing to do is to go to the neighbor of the house you're considering and ask them, is there anything in this area that I need to know about that would help me to make my decision whether I should buy this? You know, how's the water? Well, where I live right now, in our area, the water, anywhere you, build, you drill a well is terrible water. You have to spend an extra $5,000 to put in a, a casing inside the well because everything from the ground leaches into the well and turns it brown. And so we just did that because we've been fighting and fighting and fighting it at White Creek Wellness Center with our wells turning dark and our water coming out of the, you know, doing a hydrotherapy and all of a sudden the water comes out dark, washing white clothes, it comes out dark and it's an iron that stains terrible. So anywhere you drill, you have this water. So uh, we fixed, we put that casing in just a couple weeks ago after fighting with different uh, filters that, that didn't work too well. And so um, the neighbor would know that kind of thing. Are there any pollutions? How far do you live from a, um, you know, a factory or something that might um, be causing pollution? There may be noise pollution. Oh yes, you can find nice, cheap property close in the country to a interstate highway, but then you have that constant noise and it's very hard to resell that because not very many people want to put up with that. Uh, you may find, really cheap properties that has these big huge electrical lines going right next to the house and that is giving off a um, electrical mag magnet um, pollution that is um, harming your children in development but what is the airflow like is the is there a nice sunlight there do you get plenty of sun you don't want to be low in a valley you want to be up on a hill and what is the air quality? And here in um, this quote says, a yard beautified with scattering trees and some shrubbery at a proper distance from the house has a happy influence upon the family. And if well taken care of will prove no injury to the health, but shade trees and shrubbery close and dense around the house make it unhealthful for they present, I'm sorry, for they prevent the free circulation of air and shut out the rays of the sun. In consequence, a dampness gathers in the house, especially in the wet seasons. Those who occupy the sleeping rooms are troubled with rheumatism, neuralgia, and lung complaints. 
Then the great quantities of fallen leaves, if not removed immediately, decay and poison the atmosphere. Dwellings, if possible, should be built on high ground. If a house is built where the water will settle around it, remaining for a time and slowly drying away, there is a poisonous miasma continually rising from the damp ground, which breeds sore throat, fevers, ague, and lung disease. And another one in the retirement years, page 130, says so far as possible, all buildings intended for human habitation should be placed on high, well-drained ground. This will ensure a dry site. This matter is uh, often too greatly regarded. Continuous ill health, serious diseases, and many deaths result from the dampness and malaria of low-lying, ill-drained situations. Okay, and also we need to consider the type of building material. Um, if you have a house that is rock, I mean, it's built out of rock and you see that it's old, that house can possibly have mold because of the fact that that rock, it'll get damp and then it takes a lot to dry out. And if it's got a lot of leaves over it, I mean, not leaves, but vines growing on it, because rock will do that. It'll attract the rock, the vines will crawl right up it. Um, if there's not many windows, um, if, if it's in a very humid area or, or like Northern California where it rains for six months out of the year, then um, it would not be a good area. I mean, in a dry place like um, dry part of Oklahoma, uh, which is also another good place that has uh, inexpensive land and less restrictions and less taxes, um, or if it's on a high hill and lots of wind that can dry it, dry it out good, it might work out. And you also need to consider the type of heat that you have. You, some people may be allergic to, um, I used to be allergic to propane, and God has helped me through many liver cleanses and um, different cleanses to, to overcome that, and I can now be around uh, natural gas and propane where before I couldn't. Um, so you need to consider the type of heat. Um, usually if you have a wood stove, you, then you have higher insurance. If, you're in, if you have a mortgage, you're gonna to have to have insurance on your house and that will up your insurance. Um, but of course you can save a lot of money with a uh, wood stove. If you have wood and you don't have to buy it. So uh, during the time of trouble, when we can't buy and sell, that would be a good thing to have. But if, you're, you have, if you have a mortgage on the house, you can pretty much not have to worry about having wood stove because it's not going to work. You need to be out of debt. You need to work yourself and prepare yourself to buy a place in the future that you are out of debt. Um, here's a house that has mold on it. It's uh, like it's a it's a brick house, so it's rock, and so it has a problem, and we don't want that. Here's another problem with a house that um, has a lot of vines growing around it. They do look nice, um, somewhat, but you want those windows to get that free flowing air, and you want the house to dry out, and you want the sunlight to come in. So this is not a good idea either. It looks like this elderly man has pretty much lost his energy in taking care of his place so it's to be expected this is a home that is up on a hill i like this if you could be out of debt <laughs> because this is a home where you could turn it into a wellness center and that's another thing to consider is if you have the funds if you have the desire to buy a place that you could take in people and educate them. Uh, we're told that uh, missionary work of this type is the highest. This is what Enoch did. He brought people from the city to his home and he educated them. And to, to hand a pamphlet or a book to somebody is fine, but to get them into your home and teach them every reform that there is and show them how it's possible and how you love it and how you can do it with ease, they, it's exciting because then they get, the, they get the whole picture. And sometimes you can find these places um, 
that have been foreclosed and you can get them very inexpensive. You may have some work to do on them. Most, most likely you will have some work to do on them, but they can be turned into a place. And there should be a little place like this in every county where people can go and they can learn and it can support you. It doesn't have to be supported by the church. If you are out of debt and you have your food growing, you can more than easily do this work that God is calling us to do in the last days, which is the medical missionary work. It is the last work. And I wanna close with this quote, it says, God has given each one a special place and a special work. Each one is to fill his appointed place and is to help others in their God-given work. Thank you. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this information. We want this information to be um, a part of us. We want to make decisions. You have given us this ability to make these decisions because we can't do it on our own thank you for paving the way for us for giving us an example for giving us the garden of eden that we can go back to soon help us to have that little garden of eden now and bless everyone that um, has heard this and may we continue to walk in your way we pray in jesus name amen We have come to the end of our program for today. We thank you all for being with us. We invite you again to join us tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be the last day of our program, and we hope you'll be able to join us again at 7.30 p.m. May God bless you, and we'll see you soon.